each year, implementing good HCI practices. This is the ninth of our series of lessons for this course. So the goal must be to design interfaces that help users and businesses get the information they need in and out of the system by addressing the following objectives. Number one, matching the user interface to the task. And with this, also the user interface should be similar to the source document. So that is to avoid confusion uh, with the user, especially while encoding data. And making the user interface efficient, that means maybe they will be typing less and aside from typing less of course they, they, there should be minimum error or uh, if possible no errors at all providing appropriate feedback to users so the interface should be giving feedback to users like for example uh, the user should be able to know if an event was successful or if let's say something process, uh, something is processing etc so these things actually will be again we discuss in the next lessons but more in detail and then also is gen uh, generating usable queries this is of course uh, for your queries or database queries then improving the productivity of computer users so the goal is for, of course, the productivity of computer users should be uh, improved. Let's say, for example, at present, he can, uh, or you should have a target of how many records could, should be entered by the user, etc. So these are the goals. Now, guidelines for HCI approach to system design. Number one, examine the tasks to be done and consider the fit among the human, computer, and task so we have discussed fit and we have learned that uh, we should have the correct balance of human computer and task or the right combination of this so that we can uh, more or less achieve performance and well-being of users and number two identify what obstacles exist for users in their attempts to accomplish their assigned tasks so you should be able to identify these obstacles what are the problems why are they not able to do their tasks then they should be addressed is it because of the application or maybe even the environment so let's say for example is it due to uh, poor lighting is it due to poor ventilation etc so this should be addressed Keep in mind the perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use from time. So when we design, we should always remem remember the te technology acceptance model by Davis. So we're in uh, users will accept a technology if they perceive it to be useful and easy to use. Consider usability. Examine the usage environment by creating a use case scenarios that depict what is going on between users and the technology. Use the information you have gained beforehand to figure out the physical and organizational environment characteristics. So, it's like what I've said a while ago. Um, you should also take a, take a look at the physical environment, maybe the organizational environment. So, physical environment. Uh, examples of these are maybe the ventilation or the lighting etc the organizational environment will be of course maybe the hierarchy of the employees or the positions etc designed with prototyping to accommodate diverse users and users with disabilities so you have to create prototypes and maybe test these prototypes to several users so that it can accommodate users um, because again uh, users think differently 
and then also it can accommodate users with disabilities like for example users with lesser mobility uh, those with uh, impaired vision and also with impaired hearing so that's all for this chapter thank you very much